Are these actual students in college? It is insane to me how violent you can be as long as you're far left. When it comes to the Western world, there are like two factions, okay? You've got liberals and you've got everybody else, all right? Illiberal forces love to fight liberals. Will you uh, condemn Hamas here and now? I'm sorry, what? Will you condemn Hamas? Would I condemn Hamas? As a terrorist or a genocide organization? Are you asking me to put myself on a cross? If I say something, I'm sure that I will be arrested. What? For reasons of Homeland Security. So if oh. <laughs> the head of Hezbollah has said that he hopes that we will gather in Israel so he doesn't have to hunt us down globally. For it or against it? For it. Did you see your Reddit engagement yesterday? Yeah, the Reddit engagement is really high. I, if I had to guess, somebody can tell me if I'm right or wrong on this, um, but if I had to guess, I probably am like, I probably have one of the only like left-leaning political subreddits that's not like writing Hamas. All right, let me, um, let me reiterate on some fake news stuff, okay? Let me reiterate, okay? It's easy to, um, Jesus Christ. It's easy to maintain your values when it's in the face of things that are obviously correct, right? So for instance, don't steal from normal people. Yeah, obviously don't do that. Or don't hurt other people. Yeah, obviously do that, right? Um, the things where your values become a lot harder are when people that you're ordinarily aligned with seem to have understandable justification for doing things that you probably shouldn't be okay with to people that you really don't like. These are like your huge tests of, do you have a consistent set of principles and values that you apply dispassionately across all situations? Or are you just a partisan hack and it's okay when your people do bad things and the other people don't. Um, thanks for your conviction on the situation, honest takes and all. It's really heartwarming to hear it. It's the sounds and glee of the slaughtering of us here in Israel. Well, no problem, buddy. Um, <clears throat> I was trying to think of an edgy joke, but probably not. <laughs> I think that there are really good reason. There, there's good reason to condemn Hamas and their actions, and there's bad stuff that they've obviously done that we can see on video. I don't know right now if any baby heads were decapitated. I know that there was, I think, at least one Israeli spokesperson that said it, but we don't need decapitated baby heads for everything that's happened to be horrible. Don't die on the hill of decapitated baby heads. You super don't need to do that. You don't need to do it. It might be true, it might not, but that is, that's not where the fight has to be. Don't let people take it there, okay? Whether that's true or not, it's not even relevant to anything that's happening, okay? Just saying, all right? This is like, I don't know, no offense to my Jewish compadres in chat. Um, I trust, call me a cuck, call me a globalist cuck, but I trust international groups reporting about things. And I actually do have decent trust in US um, intelligence reporting on things and verifying things. I, do, I would not trust a video that Hamas publishes just by them saying it. And I don't think I would trust a video that Israel publishes without some third party verification. That's all I would say. Um, call me racist or global or whatever the fuck you, uh, xenophobic against the Middle East. Um, remember, 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 we don't speak their language. We don't know what any of them look like. We don't know th what their uniforms are. Um, when, when all those videos were flying around during the Syrian conquest, or not conquest, I'm sorry, during the Syrian refugee crisis, there were so many videos that got thrown up of Syrian FSA fighters torturing innocent, blah, blah, blah. And it was like from the Afghanistan war, like 10 years earlier, or it was like videos from Iraq, or it was videos from Libya, or it was like, you have no, so just be really, really, really careful that stuff like that can fly around on the internet and you have no fucking idea like what's true, what's false. Always wait for third party verification. It's just so important. There's zero advantage there's no reason that you have to have a take or an opinion on a video that's unverified. You don't gain anything from it. There's no reason for it. You can wait for verification. That's all I'm saying. Oh, this one's fucking insane. I don't know if this is legit or not. Rip. Oof, they lit that fucking thing up. Look at the traces. This one is literally Arma 3. It's fake. It's armor. Oh, God damn it! Do you think the Middle East will unite against Israel? Uh, <laughs> they always have been. <laughs> always has been. Where's the two guys shooting? <laughs> um, anyway. Yeah, f 
I don't know. I was gonna say, can't they? You know what? No, f it. I will say, f it. How many people live in Gaza? Is it two million people? Because I was gonna say, why can't these other Arab states take in their brothers? Although people in Palestine really don't like to be called Arabs. They are only Pal- even though they used to be called Arab Palestinians, they do not like the word Arab, okay? They are only Palestinians. But I was gonna say, why don't any of these other Arab states take other people? But then I was like, well, is that really fair? It is two million people, that's a f ton. But then you know what? How many people did uh, Europe take in during the Syrian refugee crisis? Wasn't that five million plus? How many refugees Europe took in Syrian refugee crisis? European countries host over 1 million Syrian asylum seekers. Is that today? I thought it must have been more at the height of that, no? I thought Syria's population, like, am I crazy? Why did I think that there were like 5 or 10 million people that fled Syria? I thought it was an insane amount of people. Am I just making that up? Or actually, they could have gone to other places besides Europe. Oh, okay, yeah, geez, okay, I thought I was way off on scale there. The Syrian Arab Republic's crisis remained one of the largest displacement crises in the world in 2022. Over 12 million Syrians remain forcibly displaced in the region, including 6.8 million within Syria and 5.4 million living as refugees in other countries. Okay, so that was over 5 million from Syria. Where are, our, where are our Arab brothers and sisters to host their other brothers and sisters? <laughs> I don't know. Realistically, nobody wants them. I hate to say it, it sounds mean, but it's probably not a good stock of people. They're probably pretty radicalized. They probably lack education. They're probably not effective workers. So my guess is gonna be most of the surrounding Arab states are gonna be like, you know what? We support you guys. We're gonna put the, um, the, the pa Palestinian Lives Matter flags on our Instagrams, but we don't want you, <laughs> okay? That'd be my guess. But I, I could be wrong on that, but. Palestinians have a history of causing issues when people take them in. They try to do a coup against Jordan. Oh, I didn't know that either. I'm reading this from chat. I don't know if that's true or not, but I heard that was true in Egypt, and now I guess it's true in Jordan. That's pretty <laughs> fascinating. The argument is that decapitated baby heads is being used to manufacture consent in the rest of the world to agree to any retaliation. Is there... Yeah, sure, I guess, but you don't need it. You don't need decapitated baby heads. It's so dumb. Jordan and Saudi Arabia are done with Palestine. Destiny, in Lebanon, apparently, even though the vast majority of Palestinian residents were born in Lebanon, they're still considered foreigners and are required to obtain a work permit prior to employment in specific jobs, which is a lengthy administrative process. Damn. I haven't good, heard a good argument yet for, um, for why Egypt has that border closed. I hear a bunch of cope, and I hear a bunch of bullshit. I hear, well, in the past, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood and Hamas were really bad towards Egypt. Okay, well, doesn't that argument apply tenfold in Israel? And then I've also heard, well, Egypt is very unstable right now, and taking on refugees might be uh, upsetting to the country. Well, okay. <laughs> Does that not apply to Israel right now? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, their claim is an increase in terrorist attacks when it was open. Okay, but... Yeah, I don't know. Have you heard the argument for a three-state solution separating Gaza and the West Bank rather than a two-state one? Do you agree with that? I don't know enough about the difference in peoples between the West Bank and Hamas, or I'm sorry, the West Bank and the Gaza Strip to accurately say they should all live in like totally separate areas. I'm not sure. I think a lot of the Middle East is more of an anti-Israel than pro-Palestine. That's probably true, yeah. But at some point, these countries have to want stability, right? Like... I'm from Egypt. We have a border closed so that Hamas operatives can't move in and start operating from the Sinai. We learned uh, from what Palestinian groups did in Lebanon. When did instability begin in the Middle East? When did instability begin anywhere in the world? I don't know, probably when humans started worshiping different gods or looked different from each other or had something that the other group of people want. I don't know, dude. We were instable for all sorts of reasons. Humans gonna human, guys. <laughs> It's easy right now to support Israel. The harder point will come in week two of the ground operation when that begins. I imagine I'll still be supporting, but it might be harder for public figures as the campaign starts. Well, I mean, I guess the question is like, what is Israel's mission, mission objective here, right? Like, what is the objective? Is it to, ostensibly, they're going to say they want to go in and I imagine get rid of all the terrorists from Gaza, but what does that mean, right? Some people I've talked to say that if we were born in Gaza, we would support Hamas too. Thoughts? I mean, possibly. It's good to have perspective on let other people can feel things for reasons that they feel are fully justified, but it doesn't make a, a thing right or wrong, right? What do you think was Hamas's goal when they launched that attack? I'm trying to look at their viewpoint. I cannot imagine how this turned out well for Hamas or Pal- I, I truly don't know. Um, I mean, Hamas knows they're not 
The only, I, you know what? All of these are going to be guesses, but I don't know all of the competing motivations in the region truly well enough to give you an ultra educated guess. If I had to take a super random guess, um, it could be that Hamas wasn't doing anything in Gaza, and so maybe they're going to worry about slowly losing support. And if your party is slowly losing support, you're going to have to act a little bit out of desperation. So then you do some wild shit to drum up like the soldiers and everybody. Maybe, um, maybe, maybe, maybe it's the case that if they kill enough Israeli citizens and the country's thrown into enough turmoil, maybe they can pull other regions uh, or other countries in the region into the conflict. Maybe, I, I, I mean, I don't know. Your guess is truly as good as mine. Actually, no, it's probably not. Your guess is probably significantly worse than mine if you're asking me. <laughs> because if you're asking me, I don't, yeah, I'm not going to have the best answer to that. Should Israel just recapture Gaza and incorporate it back while moving the residents to the West Bank? Nobody would like that. Well, I mean, Israel would like that. But the Palestinians in Gaza, you're just going to dump a f ton of 17, 18-year-old people into the West. It's going to be, that's just, that would be a nightmare. I don't even know if logistically if you could do it. Two million people? Have that number of people ever been moved like from one area to another that quickly before? Has that happened before? I'm sure maybe there's some example. Like that would be insane though. <clears throat> That's a lot of people to move. Syrians to Lebanon. Okay. Actually, if anybody would know anything about groups of people being marched long distances, resulting in their inevitable displacement or death, it would probably be Jewish people. I'm sure you've got like 12 holidays for like every different march you guys have done in history. So you reckon the Hassan Ethan Bridge will burn soon? I feel like, especially over the China stuff, the Tibet stuff, a little bit over the Russia Ukraine stuff, I feel like lefties are showing their ass a little bit too much over the, especially now over this stuff. Uh, I feel like I feel like there's we're starting to see it. Okay, it's happening. Off topic, you'll crush Shapiro, but if a Vosh versus Shapiro would happen, I think that'd be hilarious. Yeah, Hassan is going to tone it down tomorrow if he has any tact. I mean, he didn't really tone it down well for any of his other arguments with Ethan. But did you see Hassan going unhinged in Turkish? No, but apparently I tweeted. I thought I tweeted something earlier, and I thought it was just like somebody reporting Hassan for being racist in like four different languages. But apparently the first three tweets were just super racist, and then the fourth one was in English about what Hassan did. <clears throat> yeah, I have no f***ing idea what any of these words mean. I just assumed it was the four, it was the same message four times. But then people in my subreddit were like, oh yeah, Destiny probably just hates all Arabs now. I was like, what? what? How long have you watched me? Okay. Jesus. If the Ethan Bridge burns, Hassan's going to be forced to start debating people to save his stream members. He'll never do that. Hassan can't, he doesn't have the ego for it. He won't. He'll just keep streaming on Twitch. He'll be okay. I don't even, it's not going to f*** shit up too much, I don't think. Do you think you would disagree with Ben Shapiro about the Israeli and Palestinian conflict in any way? I don't know. I'd have to see his takes. My guess is he probably leans probably harder into the Israeli side than I would. That'd be my guess, but... At GW tweets, SJP maintains unwavering support for our people's resistance in all form. What is this? Students for Justice in Palestine. GWU Students for Justice in Palestine stands in full support of the liberation of our homeland and our people's right to resist violence 75 year long colonial colonization. Also, yeah, remember when they say 75 year, they're talking about like creation of Israel. There, they're not talking about the 60. What are people saying? Is it the 67 or 64 borders? They're talking about um, it's 67. They're talking about the elimination completely of Israel. Yeah. Over the past few days, Palestinians in Gaza and across occupied Palestine have mobilized against the Zionist entity, seizing settlements imposed on our land in violation of international law. For the first time in our history, Palestinians have reclaimed land that was ethnically cleansed from. Uh, Palestinians reclaimed land that we were ethnically cleansed from in 1948. Over 50% of Gaza's population is under 18 years old. The vast majority of them have never been outside of the colonial prison walls, have never set foot on a single inch of the land that their families were violently ethnically cleansed from. This past weekend, we witnessed them breaking free, tearing down the prison walls, and making it known to the world we will be caged no longer. Are these actual students in college? It is insane to me how violent you can be as long as you're far left. They're probably all white, too. What, what is the state? GW tweets. G, oh, George Washington University. Funny imagining that, like, my, my BLM protesters tweet, like, had the entire left-leaning internet, like, up in an outrage. But, like, student bodies are, like, openly tweeting, base Palestinian murders! Yeah, like, 
It's actually like, it is unhinged. It's not only at Harvard. I've reviewed the Twitter and Instagram accounts of Yale, Princeton, Columbia, Stanford, Dartmouth, and Johns Hopkins. Not a single one of them has issued a statement about the atrocities committed by Hamas. Is that true? War in the Middle East. As the events of recent days continue to reverberate, let there be no doubt that I condemn the terrorist atrocities perpetrated by Hamas. Oh, so they made a statement. I wonder if this came after the guy's tweet. Such inhumanity as a foreign. It's kind of weird, actually. Yeah, because wait, didn't those attacks happen on the 8th? So this is the 10th, but... Let me also state on this matter as is others that while our students have the right to speak for themselves, no student group, not even 30, 30 student groups, speak for Harvard University or its leadership. We will all be well served in such a difficult moment by rhetoric that aims to illuminate and not inflame. And I appeal to all of us in the community of learning to keep this in mind as our conversations continue. Oh, and then on October 9th, it said, we write to you today, heartbroken by the death and destruction unleashed by the attack by Hamas that targeted citizens of Israel this weekend by the war in Israel and Gaza now underway. Well, this is on the 9th. That's a new statement. There's backlash from the one on the 9th. Wait, did they have another one on the 9th? What was the other one on the 9th? Wait, show me. Do you have a link to that? I'm curious. Large numbers of Harvard student organizations blaming Israel solely for Hamas terrorist attacks killing 700 civilians. Can't imagine who would want to identify such a group. Harvard parents, talk to your educated kids about this. Joint statement by the Harvard-Palestine Solidarity Groups. Okay, but these weren't necessarily statements by... Are these all student groups? Jesus Christ. If I recall, there were 20 student groups from Harvard that basically all said they stand with Palestine, including Jewish ones. <laughs> nice. Pretty sure if you're a Jewish one, you have to. Because every other, every other like, Muslim slash Arab slash anti-colonial slash anti-racist student group is like looking at you like, well, what do you Jews think? Jesus, how cucked. Okay, a real a quick thing, a quick note on like cancel culture. I don't necessarily consider it cancel culture to enforce rules on a website. I don't think that's cancel culture, okay? So for instance, let's say somebody goes on Twitter and starts spamming, calling like the N-words, you know, or the N-word like every black person I see, and people are like, ban that guy, that's f I don't, I don't consider that cancel culture. If there is a reasonable TOS in place, and I think that we can probably agree that on most social media, uh, I'm okay with like probably banned racial slurs. In my world, I would say use the mute block function, whatever. But racial slurs want to be banned, fine. I think that's okay. Um, I, I don't think it's cancel culture to call that. When people are being like openly racist or hostile cer towards certain groups of people, I don't consider it cancel culture to say like, let's say there's a lefty on Twitch. And he's like, cracker ass, cracker, cracker. Like, you, like report him, ban him. Like, it's a racial slur. What are you doing? Like, you're saying we can't say the N-word, we can't say the F slur. Like, that's fine. But like, you can't start using slurs for people of majority status uh, races either. Like, it's either all okay or it's none of it's okay, right? At least when it comes to TOS. Now, again, I'm not saying that all of it is the exact same or the N-word is the exact same thing as the cracker word or blah, 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 blah. But I'm just saying, like, it's either all or nothing. It can't be, you can't unfairly enforce a TOS like that. So if people are literally openly, for instance, say, supporting Hamas, right? If you're openly supporting Hamas, then the TOS should deal with you the same way that they dealt with Nazis. I think that's super easy. If somebody comes out and they cheer for, um, you know, if they cheer for minorities getting murdered, or if they cheer for Jewish people getting Holocaust or whatever, and there's a TOS bull action, on that, then there should be TOS action people to support Hamas. I think it's fair. I think it's totally fine. If you don't like that, which personally, I don't like that. If you want to go out and support Hamas and you want to cheer for them, at least in the United States, God damn it, that should be your God-given right. You should be able to go out in the street, wave the Hamas and Palestinian flags together, call for the death of Jews in other countries. I think you have the right as American. Um, but on our social media platforms, we've decided because of people on the right that we don't want that type of speech on our social media platforms. So then we should ban it, whether it's on the left or the right. I think that's a really big thing that I feel strongly about. One thing that was insane, what do you think of the New York student bar people rescinding their support? Yeah. One thing that I thought was crazy were all of these student orgs coming out with support for Hamas. Shit is f***ing wild. Um, this is a test of principles. Personally, I don't like going after people. I don't think we should ever go after people's jobs and stuff or try to get people like canceled from working and whatnot. However, I think I would apply this standard fairly to the right and to the left. If you're going to come out and you're going to make a statement 
on behalf, on behalf of a student org and that represents your school because you're a student org of that school, I think your name needs to be attached to that. I think your name needs to be attached to that. Um, and I think it should be. And then whatever consequences flow from there ought to flow from there, but yeah. Destiny, I think the message said that Israel is solely responsible for all violence. Yeah, and people, and I even see people in my chat doing this a little bit, people can walk this bullshit line of like, well, they're not explicitly supporting these guys. They're not explicitly supporting Hamas. Or when they support Hamas, they're not explicitly supporting the deaths of like, blah, blah, blah. Hold up. That is not the same standard that the left has applied in the past when it comes to disavowing people. These are the same people that lost their mind when you'd say all lives matter. And they would go, excuse me, what? You can't say that. It has to be a full, a full embrace of Black Lives Matter. No other statement is acceptable. Nothing else is acceptable. Nothing, you can't, you can't mention black, black crime, you can't mention anything. It's like, okay, fine, that's fine. But you better believe then when Hamas is paragliding into parties and murdering festival goers, I need to see from you, this is abs not any of this bullshit. Well, Israel's responsible for the violence. Or blah, 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 you, right? No, you're going to be held to the same standard. Because you should. You should hold people to the same standards that hold themselves against you, as long as you're not violating your own principles. Um, I'm all in, in support of, if you are a lefty and you've engaged in this, if there's one Nazi at the table and 10 people, that's 11 Nazis. If that's the type of thinking you've engaged in, then the same thing should be applied towards you, 100%. That's totally fair. That's totally, totally, totally fair. Um, yeah, like that one person tried to quote tweet me and they were like, very clever how destiny mixes up uh, Hamas and Palestine. That's you, mother. You guys have been doing that because every time you hear about this terrorist attack and you go free Palestine free Palestine You're the ones that are muddying the waters F you but yeah uh, Would you talk to an Israeli about the situation No, the problem is that like I've gotten like tw 20 different people from Israel that have all like emailed me and damn it. They want to come in and talk but like here, Here's the issue is that like if I'm gonna do this I, I need to do even more reading about even the current event situation because not to be mean, but just because you're an Israeli doesn't mean you have any f***ing idea about anything that's going on. Like, it truly is the case. That sounds so mean. I don't mean to make it sound that way, but there are very conflicting points of view of even what's happening in Israel from other people in Israel, right? Much the same way that I wouldn't expect one person from even Florida to give me the whole story of Florida, or even one person from Miami to give me the whole story of Miami. I'm very scared to let, like, an Israeli or a Palestinian to just come on and speak because every single time that's happened in the past for any other minority group, I get a ton of people like, bro, this guy doesn't speak for all black people. This guy doesn't speak for all French people. This guy doesn't speak for all Muslims in Paris. This guy doesn't speak, right? So I'm trying to be careful and not just letting, because if I bring on a person like that, it feels very authoritative. Like, oh, I'm an Israeli from Israel. I'm going to tell you why, you know, either our own country are demons or Palestinians are demons. And it's like, fuck, that's just not, I shouldn't. Yeah, I, I need to know a little bit. Um, I need, I need to know a little bit more or have like a very specific conversation to do that, I think, yeah. Also, we had Karanto Sam, the foremost expert of Middle Eastern politics, so. The New York City DSA put out a COPE statement after the entire state of New York started shitting on them, but he read it, still a horrible statement. Yeah, fuck them, dude, fuck all of them. We're in a religious no. war here. I am with Israel. Do whatever the hell you have to do to defend yourself. Level the place. We're retard, Lindsey Graham has always been retarded. Jesus Christ. Also, th stop. This is like, the, the calling is like a religious conflict is like, just f off. <laughs> you should look up the cases where IDF or Israelis killed Palestinians and what happened to those people. I know of one case where an Israeli was given life in prison for the death of Palestinians. Well, there's some guy in here like yesterday linking a big report where I think it was IDF soldiers were shooting at Palestinians like hundred yards away and like 200 of them got killed and there was like probably no reason to be shooting at them somebody if somebody the guy that was near i think yesterday the day before wanted to um or was linking i don't know if he's still here or not but like i mean again like bad things have happened on both sides but um can you think of one good reason why israel israel's 200 million dollar missile defense system failed and the idf was absent for 24 hours during the attack pretty convenient everyone missed hamas driving a fucking tractor up to the border too now bb has all the justification needs to wipe gaza off the map 
Yes, I think that is what happened. I think that every time something goes wrong, it is a massively planned conspiracy that nobody just ever has any evidence for whatsoever. Um, I do believe that. I think it was a conspiracy, and I think conveniently it allows me to blame the same people that my particular political ideology already primes me to hate, uh, again, with absolutely no evidence for any of that. So yes, I do agree with everything you just said, and I think it is true, yes. <clears throat> The only thing I would follow up on right now relating to that line of thought, that conspiratorial line of thought, is supposedly Egypt gave Israel a shout out, a shout out, a uh, heads up, I should say, that this attack was coming uh, 10 days earlier, I think they said. I don't know where we're at on that, if that was actually true or not. Yeah. <clears throat> Destiny, check out the hashtag, the Gaza you don't see on Twitter. Most people don't realize there's an upper class in Gaza that lives in luxury. Guess where a lot of the aid money went? I don't know if that's true or not. I have heard the argument that like Hamas is never starving, so any aid that gets sent into the Gaza Strip is always going to Hamas. I don't know if that's true or not, but... Did partisan Jews in World War II, after being occupied and treated humanely, do similar atrocities to Nazis when they could? Civilian murder, baby killing, etc. I'm actually curious. Wasn't there... um? After Kristallnacht, wasn't there, weren't there stories of some Jews fighting back or some uprisings that happened? It was pretty limited, I think. Um, it was pretty limited. But I, I think one of the things is that I hate doing Holocaust memes because nobody f cares and it's all like conspiracy driven anymore. The thing, the reason why the Holocaust was so crazy, okay? The reason why the Holocaust was so crazy is because Hitler was very ideologically committed to killing Jewish people. It was not like a side thought or an afterthought. It wasn't just like a thing that they tried to do in their free time. It was like diverting actual military resources and then having actual military plans to, with a speed uh, hitherto unseen in any part of the world, systematically organize, enslave, and then work and kill groups of people. It was an insane effort. Uh, it was an insane effort. So. Yeah, that, like, I don't know if any country, I don't think any country has ever, not the Turkish people, the Armenians, not anybody, I don't think any country has ever genocided a group of people with that type of lightning military efficiency as they did in Germany. So, yeah, so when you look for, like, Jews fighting back, it's harder to see. Now, that's a hard statement to make now because people on the right say, oh, you're trying to draw up support, but, yeah, I don't know. Ghetto uprising? Yeah, there were a couple of uprisings, but, but I don't think they were very effective. Uh, Hitler had that shit on lock. Look at this stupid fuck. I'm not just gonna spend this all day going over tweets. Everybody is in up. Charleston White. This guy's an actual like admitted rapist, and he like is proud of it. Why would I care what this guy's say about anything? How much do you think religion actually plays a part in the hatred on either side here? As an Irish person, I always see people use their history as a couple of historical religion. Personally, I mean, call me uneducated, but I, I think that these conflicts are mainly geopolitical in nature. And when I say geopolitics, what I mean are political issues relating to the geography, the borders, the resources, the armies, like all of the stuff that just kind of exists on the ground, like the more kind of material stuff and then the political stuff. I don't know if, um, I don't know if it's like religion driving the people. I don't know the West, like we kind of like to say it's all like holy wars and shit, but. Like even when you look at like the crusades and shit. Um, a lot of this stuff was driven by, you know, like land acquisition or fighting on behalf of or against like multiple popes or some shit. I don't remember. Like fucking, weren't there like nine crusades or sh some shit? I don't know. <clears throat> Is Islam inherently anti-Semitic? Um, maybe? But it's a matter of like, I mean, religions can moderate and be a little bit reformed too, right? Like I said, like Muslims in the West, when I, <laughs> careful. Muslims in North America are generally pretty chill. They're not running around like killing Jewish people and doing like insane shit all the time. Um, yeah, I don't know. D different people can be radical. I would argue that any religious sect is almost inherently anti every other religious sect. Like if you're Christian, Jews literally murdered your dude. <laughs> okay, it was pretty shitty. And the, like the Pharisees and all those people were Jewish, right? Um, so, I mean, like, I don't know how you can be a Christian and think that, like, Jewish people are chill. I mean, they are, though. In the in the in in America, Christians love Jews. So, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of, yeah, I don't know. F religion. <laughs> Atheist. Blah. What if you're a Crips, Jim? True. Start researching the bombing campaign. Also look into white phosphorus bombs. 
I, I don't have my mouse. Molina's got my dongle, if you know what that means. I think this is a problem with secular liberals not being able to understand what it's like to actually believe. If we accept that religious people actually believe what they say they believe, then it would be ridiculous to assume those beliefs do not inform their actions. No, I I think it super defend, uh, depends. Can Religion can drive you to do crazy things, and, and religion can hijack other processes for sure, but I don't think religion on its own explains a lot of the crazy behaviors that like groups of people will take. I don't, maybe you can do like a few people like that, like a cult or whatever, but like massive amounts of people, I don't know about that. Um, yeah, I don't know about that. But I could also be wrong. But also I was Catholic for 15 years, so fuck you. It's not like I have no idea what religious people think. Nobody would give a fuck about this tiny strip of land if not for the holy books. Mm, no, I listen, I've probably said that exact phrase before, but no, I don't think that's true. Uh, I think Israel cares about that piece of land, or Jewish people care about it because that's where their country is. If I had to guess, if I had to guess, I could be wrong. If I had to guess, if you would have created the state of Israel in fucking Turkey, we'd probably see like similar-ish types of conflicts, except it'd be against Turks and uh, Jewish people and not like Jewish people and Palestinians. That'd be my guess. Um, maybe with a little bit less ire because there wouldn't be, you know, the, they don't have like Jerusalem and all their 50 million fucking holy landmarks. But, um, I mean, that's just happened to be where the state of Israel is created. I could be wrong on that, but I think that, um, yeah, the religion adds a little spice to it. True. <clears throat> Do you think this could actually turn into World War III when other, um, when other groups all of a sudden get really confident? The only way I could ever see this turning in, let's see, World War III predictions. Um, the only way I could ever see it turning into like World War III is if, is if Israel started to do really well uh, with US support on the ground or in the sky, and they started to advance into the countries, into other countries. That would be like scary stuff, but I mean, like, nobody in that region, I don't think, are there, what, what the fuck else is there besides NATO? Like, are there other formal military alliances? Like, are, I know that Russia and Syria are very close, but do they have, like, a formal declared military alliance? Um, people are saying CSTO. I want to be honest, I've never heard of that in my entire fucking life. Let's look up. The Collective Security Treaty Organization <coughs> is an intergovernmental military alliance in Eurasia consisting of six post-Soviet states. Armenia, Belarus, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Russia, and Tajikistan. Okay. Destiny, question mark. A Jewish state didn't exist for 1,800 years. They objectively and intentionally rolled into the Middle East and mass and used their political and financial strength to take it from the people who live there. The original Palestinian grievance is very valid. I mean, no, I don't think it is. They, bro, they lost World War I. All their territory got taken from them. I mean, what do you want to... The British had the mandate on how they wanted to govern that territory, just like the Ottomans had before then. The, the, the Palestinians only existed in that at the pleasure of like the Ottoman Empire. Right? And then it was up to the rest of the world to figure out what to do afterwards. I don't think you can say that your grievances for all past land after wars have been lost are legitimate grievances that you can like enforce with violence in modern day situations. I don't think that, but I mean, there might be a really good uh, answer or there might be a really good reason why what I'm saying there is not true. Maybe there are good reasons, but yeah, I don't know. The equivalent for this, if people were saying, well, the shooter was bullied and mass shoot. Oh, yeah, Frogan is fucking retarded. I'm glad she's getting bullied on Twitter. What an idiot. Do you really think that lefties are a couple steps away from committing their own terrorist attacks, like you said in your recent video? Um, also, I found the part of your tweet that said these lefties support Nazis if they were there back then. I, I, I feel like if we're if they don't do it, we're definitely moving in that direction. Yes, like we we're definitely moving in that direction. Maybe we never get there, but we're closer, of course. Why is the international community never criticized Israel for expanding into areas given to Palestine in the 47 partition plan? Because a lot, because as soon as Israel moved in, as soon as Jewish people moved in, everybody's trying to, even in the original plan, I think the Palestinians in the area tried to kill the Jewish people that came in. And then, and then Israel, the Jewish citizens fought back. It's 
been perpetual conflict, okay? That region for 80 years has been perpetual conflict. Anytime somebody says, oh, well, it's right because in 2000 this happened, something probably happened in 1999. Or when somebody's like, well, it, it was, you know, Israel's right because of the Six Day War. There was probably something that happened just earlier. Like them saying that like, oh, uh, what to Egypt for the, um, fuck, it was, it's not the Jordan River, for the other thing where Egypt's like, we might blockade this. And Israel's like, hey, you're gonna blockade it? We're gonna preemptively fuck your shit up then, right? Like everybody's been fighting constantly. Don't ever let somebody link you one thing and go, this is why it's like this. It's been a back and forth constantly for years, for decades, okay? <laughs> Since the creation of that state, yeah. But also this whole region of the world from like Rome and Greece to the conquests and the crusades and the empire, like everybody's always like, people just like to fight, okay? in this region of the world. Why do people keep linking this? Integration of Hamas terrorists. Warning, this is, oh, interrogation. You keep typing this wrong, dipshit. I, bro, I saw this video earlier. I never, I'm sorry, I don't like to sound mean, but if Israel puts it out, I don't believe it until I get third party verification. And you should have the exact same feeling as me, I think. Um, same thing with, um, same thing with Palestine uh, or Hamas. When Hamas puts out a video, try to wait for third-party verification. Wait for international groups, wait for another country, but don't, I, I wouldn't trust anything that either of these two sides put out because they have a highly vested interest in making the world support their cause, okay? How much heard about the leftists trying to order pizza during Occupy Wall Street? They won't be able to organize a tax coordinated because they cannot even order pizza. I mean, bro, there's a lot of these people and they don't have to be that coordinated. I mean, you could argue that a lot of the BLM rioting was like a form of, I wouldn't call it terrorism, it's kind of extreme, but like you could make arguments that like stuff, that type of violence could be possible, right? I'm just saying that like you, you, your, your eyes are closed to the world. If you see like first leftists are saying, well, actually all whites are evil. It's like, okay. All whites are colonial settlers. Okay. Uh, sometimes if you're black, rioting is actually based. Okay. Even if you're stealing things like shoes. Okay whatever. Um, also, you know, all of these countries are built on colonial and settler, settler violence. Like, okay. Uh, when Hamas does terrorist attacks against all Jewish people, all of it can be justified. Like, okay. Like the next step of that is that like attacking Jewish people or pro-Zionist people in other countries is also based. Like it's such an easy next step. It's not even like a big leap of logic. So for people to be like, oh no, this will never go anything further. When people are already justifying terror attacks right now, I think that's like pretty silly. Um, I think, I think you have to be and you have to be a little bit aware of the direction of things. Uh, yeah. Rather than to close your eyes to everything. It's like, oh, I'm sure everything will be okay. I don't know. No, I do know. Have you seen any of the footage of the Gaza bombings on our combat footage? No, I haven't looked at any of that yet. Literally any of that. I'll probably do more, a lot more looking at that tomorrow. Do you think Jews doing ghetto uprisings in Nazi Germany deserve condemnation because they targeted civilians? I don't know. That's a really rough one. Um, I feel like I had this conversation on a stream before. If Jewish people in uh, Nazi World War II Germany were targeting German civilians, would that be morally justified? I feel like, I thought, did we, I don't know where we ended up there. I feel like I would lean towards no on that. Probably not, but... There's a, there are like esoteric arguments to be made about the responsibility of voting, which is also interesting. Like if you vote for a particular policy, are you morally responsible? Yeah, I don't know. Do you think that leftism is inherently violent because so many hierarchies are considered acts of violence? A little bit. Leftism does a really good job at justifying violence. Not to pull a Vosh here, but again, if you were to look at, um, um, <clears throat> Hitler didn't get voted in, he seized power by force. Uh, no, that's not true. I don't think that's a good reading of what happened in Nazi Germany. Uh, I think it is a far more realistic and sobering view to look at Hitler as a character that using governmental systems slowly unraveled democracy until he got basically the power that he wanted. Um, going into World War II and assuming that Hitler, like, took over or conquered or whatever, the reason why that's one, it's just not true. But the reason why it's a bad train of thought is because if you look at like the United States and you're like, oh, okay, well that could never happen here because like Trump doesn't have an army, for instance, that's, that's a bad train of thought. It is very possible to unravel your democracy 
by using bastardized, ver bastardized versions of democratic processes, right? So in Nazi Germany, or not Nazi Germany, the Weimar Republic, in, in, in pre-Hitler, or well, been during Hitler, in Germany, the Enabling Act would be one of the big things you're looking at for a thing that was like kind of sort of passed that started to unravel a lot of freedoms. I think there are other th steps that happened prior to that. I don't know all of them off the top of my head. We can go Wikipedia warrior it, but like, um, yeah, there are, yeah, don't don't just view, especially in the case of Germany, don't look at it as like, oh, Hitler just seized power. It's like, oh, kind of. But there was a lot of governmental systems that he used on the way there that people were kind of sort of, okay, so yeah, be careful. Yeah, don't, don't assume that, that's not true. <clears throat> also, don't ever forget, okay, um, don't ever forget, uh, when it comes to, there, I feel like there's like, when it comes to the Western world, there are like two factions, okay? You've got liberals and you've got everybody else, all right? If you're a liberal, okay, you believe in freedom of speech, freedom of religion, private property. If you're a liberal, people on the right and people on the left hate you. And these people will even sometimes work together to try to hate you or kill you, okay? So whether you're talking about the, um, I don't remember the abbreviations of the parties, but whether you're talking about the communists uh, and the far right working together, the Nazis in, in Germany, whether you're talking about the Soviet Union in Germany, shaking hands and making agreements to cut countries up, like the far right and the far left, illiberal forces love to fight liberals. Just be aware of that, okay? I think that it feels like liberalism sometimes does maybe too good a job of incorporating all of their criticisms because it, the, the the criticism of liberalism festers in liberalism really hardcore. It doesn't fester in, in, in far left or far right states, right? Because the first thing lefties do when they get power is they murder every other different lefty. And the first things far right people do is they murder every other non-far right person, right? Because that's what happened in Nazi Germany. When, when the far right came into power, they killed, is it the, um, is it the KPD? I don't remember the previous part. They murdered every communist. So the communist like, whoa, what? Bro, we're all a liberal, yeah. But yeah, just, yeah, liberalism needs to do a better job at defending itself. It's hard because, like, in a liberal society, we, um... In a liberal society, we let all people kind of, like, flourish if they want. That's why, like, the Hassans are allowed to survive in our society. But in his society, we would be forced into re-education camps. Um... Yeah, I don't, I don't know what the answer is to that. You, you, oh, no, I do know. You, liberal Liberalism needs to defend itself a little bit better. Rather than, like, these people running around screaming, like, liberalism is destroying the world and capitalism can't feed anybody and blah, blah, blah. It's like, bro, these are the surviving empires. What the fuck are you talking about? Whatever bullshit-ass experiment that you wanted to try, like, it fucking failed. Okay, that's why you have to talk about, like, what, like, Catalonia or whatever or the former Yugoslavia or the fucking Soviet Union or Mao murdering millions of fucking people. Like, come on, bro. Like, your shit sucked. Okay, you can criticize capitalism, that's fine, but don't pretend like you've got a better alternative. That's bullshit, okay? Fuck you. But. Tesky, you made some statements about Hassan losing relevant. Oh, I don't want to talk about Hassan all the time. He, he's, he's just, he's triggering me because he's one of the larger lefties and he's like emblematic of all these guys that are essentially like cheering on terrorists, which is fucking wild to me. Yeah, if only those commie regime, regimes just sacrificed a few million more people, they would have done it. Um, let's see. Here are a lot of people criticizing the West, uh, the West Wick is another way of criticizing liberalism. I don't know what that sentence means. Follow up on your question. Why can't each country in the area, Egypt, Syria, Iran, Qatar, Israel, etc., take a portion of the Palestinians till they all have peace? Well, I don't think people want Palestinians because they're a little bit radical. I think is like the general take is from what I've heard. Where only everywhere they go, they try to like coup the government and shit. Well, apparently this has happened in Jordan and Egypt so far. I don't know if that's true in all cases or not, but yeah, I'm not sure. Also, I don't know if, I don't know how many of these countries actually give a f about Palestinians versus they just hate Israel, so. Why can't the rest of the world just take in the Israelis? Otherwise, wouldn't Israel still be surrounded by enemies? Um, I mean, because arguably for Jewish people, this is like the only place, this is like their their country, I guess. I don't know. Do you think there's any argument to be had that conflating Hamas and Palestinians is okay because Hamas is mostly supported by Palestinians? Kind of like how in a democracy, if someone voted to office, you'd say they're actually friends of the will of people. A little bit. Um, there is an argument to be made for that. The counter argument is going to be, well, of course, these people are going to be radicalized. And they're going to support a radical entity, but that's because Israel radicalized them. That would be like the counter argument to that. But Hassan on Hamas taking hostages. Is this, are we just a Hassan reaction channel now? <laughs> Listen, I'm here for it, okay? 
Didn't Palestinians radicalize Israelis? Yeah, we're just dumb. Yeah, you can go back and forth forever on this, okay? That because they understand that Israel does not see them as human beings or, or treat them as human beings, and they will bomb them relentlessly, uh, the goal was to, one, engage in a prisoner swap, and two, to ensure that Gaza was not reduced to rubble because there were Israeli citizens inside of Gaza now. And once the bombing did not stop, they said they were going to start executing the prisoners unless the bombing, unless the bombing stopped. They didn't just say, "Oh yeah, we took hostages, so we're just gonna we're just gonna kill them." It all it also still corresponds to these people are engaging in this uh, behavior specifically because they're like violent and crazy and and don't have like any other uh, they don't have any uh, other real like tangible goals at all. It's just they're barbaric, they're bad. And they're barbaric and bad, and they're doing this specifically because of their uh, barbarism and, and bad behavior. Are their actions actually uh, group? Like, I, won't, I don't even necessarily... I wouldn't even... I don't think Hassan actually said anything wrong there. Like, I don't think I would necessarily just go to be saying, it just sucks because of how one-sided his analysis would be. Shadow Frost, 3167, thanks for giving five subs. Because he will give, like, an insanely charitable and nuanced take when it comes to analyzing the you know, the behaviors of Hamas and Palestine. But then when it comes to like, why are conservative parents scared of trans stuff in school? Oh, because they're evil transphobic fucking demons. Like what? <laughs> like, yeah, I, I just, I don't like the selective skepticism that people apply and then the hyper selective hyper charity that people seem to apply, Yeah. But also who's saying that Hamas are just like a bunch of like barbarians? Right? I mean, I don't know. Maybe they are. But I feel like I've seen so much, like, Israel bad over the past, like, 10 years even. But I don't know. Liberals are? Yeah, I mean, now people probably are, sure. But Ben Shapiro? Sure. <clears throat> Top of the Hassan clip. And now you can say, don't see how killing festival goers breaking out of prison. Of course that those festival goers did not deserve to be fucking murdered. But why, what do you mean? Like you're saying breaking out of prison, you're, you're having a festival next to a concentration camp. They, they did not deserve to die, okay? Why not own it, Hassan? Oh, why is he being such a pussy? Amer but America deserved 9-11? Did the people in the towers deserve to die? Or what's the... You know who's responsible for that death, uh, for every single death though? The Israeli state Base. that won allowed there to be a festival next to a concentration camp and two has been fucking killing the shit out of people in the west bank for so long that they've demonstrated time and time again that they are an apartheid state and that they have no interest in collaborating with the palestinians and want to forcibly expel them from the their own fucking borders okay this is once again not my take this is the perspective Wouldn't that take apply the other way around then? Just don't be in Gaza when the bombs hit? Well, they, I don't think, if you're in Gaza, I don't really think you can leave, right? A few years ago, lefties were hyped that a mosque shooter was following Ben Shapiro on Twitter. Do you think they'll keep the same idea when a guy in America says, sure, we'll go and shoot a bunch of Jews and later we find out it was Hassan's slash second piece? Sure, I mean, right now, I think they would almost support it, right? Are you surprised at how quiet most of the big streamers have been on this? Like a year ago, I would have expected thoughts and prayers tweets. Yeah, but the problem is that like you're in an awkward spot because it's a complicated situation and like people on the left are opposite to you. It's really scary disagreeing with people on the left and social media. The right is like a punching bag. Like not only can I shit on them, I don't have to be educated on the topic at all and I get huge like virtue points for it. Fighting with the left can be scary. Like your whole career can get fucking destroyed on <laughs> on social media if you're not careful there. But yeah, I would imagine I'd imagine most big streamers to put like a milk toast message or nothing because it's just, it's also it is legitimately like a complicated issue. Like what's what has Pokemon said? Let's find out what is Pokey's tweet on the issue. I feel like they'll just be like, oh, violence is always bad, guys. Oh. Thank you, thank you. On kick, Forsen has finally subscribed to me. We're going to the top, boys. Oh, that's so unlucky, man. No, what's he doing? What did he do? Game is frozen. So what did he man. do? What? That is, that is just simply so unlucky. It's time for a sensei. What that happened? is beyond unlucky. Snitch the bugs. It was right here. I had to put the beds on my bar. 
And he did the the, the Giga Insane Perch, like right it's above the oh, thing. Can't do it. And there was no time to throw a pearl to get there because I don't have the life. Because I didn't have any food. It's, it's impossible to do at this point, right? If he runs in, the dragon just kills him, or...? Speedrun. Very steps. unlucky. Maybe Forsen's just run out of content. He just wants to do the same run forever and ever. Maybe? That's very unfortunate. Good evening. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you for coming to campus tonight and uh, presenting your point of view. It's always valuable to have two sets of uh, views going on at the same time. Um, very useful. Uh, my name is Jumana Imad Musa Ahmed Al-Bahri. Um, and I'm a student here at UCSD. Uh, I was uh, reading your literature. I found that much more interesting than the talk. And um, I found some interesting things about the MSA, which is an organization that's very active on campus, and it is hosting uh, our annual Hitler Youth Week. You should come out to those events. Um, if you could clarify the connection between the MSA and Jihad terrorist networks, because yeah, you last, last I checked, we had to do our own fundraising, and uh, we never get help from anyone. So if you could clarify the connection between UCSD's MSA, or if you don't have such information, if you could connect other MSAs on UCs, because the connection wasn't too clear in the pamphlet, just if you could clarify. Okay. Will you uh, condemn Hamas here and now? I'm sorry, what? Will you condemn Hamas? Would I condemn Hamas? As a terrorist or a genocidal organization. Are you asking me to put myself on a cross? So you won't. I, I actually have had this experience many times. You didn't read the pamphlet because the pamphlet is chapter and verse. Uh, the main connection is that the MSA is part of the Muslim Brotherhood network as revealed in the documents. I don't think you understood what anyway, I meant by that. I is, meant if I say something, I'm sure that I will be arrested. What? For reasons of Homeland Security. So if oh. <laughs> what? Wait, that's a wild statement. Like, will you make a statement on this? Uh, if I were to tell you what I really feel like, I'd probably be arrested because I'm a terrorist. <laughs> what the f If you could please just answer my question. If you condemn Hamas, Homeland Security will if arrest you. If I support you. Hamas, oh. because your question forces me to condemn Hamas, if I support Hamas, well, I look really if you bad. don't condemn Hamas, obviously you support it. Case closed. <laughs> I have had this experience, uh, I give you, I had this experience at UC Santa Barbara where there were 50 members of the Muslim Students Association sitting right in the rows there. And throughout my hour talk, I kept asking them, will you condemn Hezbollah and Hamas? Uh, and none of them would. And then when the question period came, the president of the Muslim Students Association was the first person to ask questions. And I said, you know, before you start, will you condemn Hezbollah? And he said, well, that question is too complicated for a yes, no answer. So I said, okay, I'll put it to you this way. I'm a Jew. The head of Hezbollah has said that he hopes that we will gather in Israel so he doesn't have to hunt us down globally. For it or against it? For it. Thank you. <laughs> Jesus. Thank you for coming and showing everybody what's, what's here. And you're wearing a, a terrorist neckerchief. If you understood... Uh, you, know, no, you didn't hear the lady. You Could you please question, answer my question? You get, Wait, what is the handkerchief? Is it like a symbol for... I don't know what any of these fucking symbols are. You don't get to make a speech. Yes, sir. Some esoteric shit. Oh, Palestinian kifi, yeah is a checkered black and white scarf that is worn around the neck or head. This uh, kefiyah has become a symbol of Palestinian nationalism dating back to the 36-39 Arab revolt in Palestine. Outside of the Middle East and North Africa, the kefiyah first gained popularity among activists pointing the Palestinians in the conflict with Israel and is the icon of Palestinian solidarity. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. 
new Ryan Long video. It's been a few days now. I still haven't weighed in on Israel, Palestine. I honestly don't know who to post. Usually it's easy. BLM, bang, Ukraine, bang, COVID, bang. Hey, did you do your Israel, Palestine post yet? I've never missed a stand. So who'd you go with? I look at my phone, I see a lot of Republicans supporting Israel. So I go, maybe stay away from that. Then I see a lot of the people we've been calling Nazis supporting Palestine. But then get this, the people that we've been calling them Nazis with are happy Israel's getting attacked. Riddle me that. But there really is no easy answer here. Did you do your Israel, Palestine post yet? No. What your manager think of that? I'm retired. Oh, you don't have representation right now? Obviously, I was at the front lines of getting mad at Kanye West when he was doing the anti-Semitism stuff. Everyone was thanking me for standing up for the Jewish community. So naturally, I'm seeing this happen. I go, okay, we're back with the Jews again. I see Kylie Jenner post for Israel. I think, okay, the word's in. Then boom, she's getting killed on every angle. So it's not Israel. So I start doing a bit more research. I'm seeing queers for Palestine. And generally, you want to be on the side of the queers. If you look at the things, you're not going to get in trouble if you go with what the queers are saying. Then Mia Khalifa, who we obviously support, is posting with the queers. And she's getting fired from her job. The whole reason I'm posting this is to get in better standing with my job. And by the way, I started to see that your silence is noted post popping up, so we're running out of f***ing time here. If you had to pick, who would you say? I would stay out of it like I told you. But if you kind of have to choose, which is sort of what a situation I feel like I find myself in. <laughs> But you don't understand, I gotta post to support one of them. I know to you, it might be like, oh, who cares what he thinks? A buddy of mine booked a Geico commercial from his Ukraine TikTok, so it happens. Feels like we like decolonizing. What, what is decolonizing? Is that just like killing the people? It's never situation. That's literally what I was saying, man. Maybe if I look at who's getting censored, that's a good place to look. Like follow the YouTube warnings. And then I'm looking at UN women, I'm thinking, you know, follow the sniz, whatever the women say is usually pretty good. They're just posting random UN women. Wait, thinking, what is this you know, tweet? Remember, trans lesbians are lesbians too. Let's uplift and honor every expression of love and identity. Happy international hashtag lesbian day. What the fuck, bro? What are we, what are we doing? Don't follow the sniz. Whatever the women say is usually pretty good. They're just posting random shit that has nothing to do with it. Trans lesbians are lesbians. Can I just go with that? Just like a random blanket post. Just be like, hey lesbos, just so you know, lesbos with dongs are still lesbos. Stop avoiding the dong lesbos. I can't, I, I feel like it's the wrong move. You and women tweets wild shit all the time. Oh, I remember this tweet. <laughs> this was a wild tweet. Of all the journalists killed in 2021, 11% were women. In 2022, or in 2020, this was 6%. On the international day of hashtag end impunity for crimes against journalists, let us say out loud, stop targeting women journalists. <laughs> what a weird fucking tweet. <laughs> oh my god. Thoughts on iShow Speed getting unbanned? That's good for us, right? <clears throat> what do you think about the allegations of mass, mass rapes that have been going around? Um, I wouldn't I think I've heard of a few rapes that people are corroborating, but I don't know if I would say anything about mass rapes. I haven't heard anything like reliable about that so far, so I wouldn't be repeating that. Although you better believe if they were doing it, the left would defend it. Would you actually stream on Twitch if unbanned? It would just, it would give me like a presence there again. And maybe like we can actually revive the actual politics community on Twitch. Cause like I participate in panels and stuff. The thing is, is that most large political streamers don't want anything to do with other political streamers. So like the politics scene on Twitch is basically dead as long as it's all lefties running it because they're too scared to talk to anybody. Like even Hassan's orbiters, like Denim's and um, Mike, they don't even get to talk to Hassan. <laughs> like it's fucking worthless. So if I could like go on panel shows and stuff again on Twitch, and then that would also mean that all of my orbiters or everybody in the Destiny Extended Universe would also be able to stream on Twitch again too, which would be nice. So. What the mel? You know what we're eating? I want to eat good mel foods. Wobby give a take on everything. What about Israel and Palestine? All right, I actually will weigh in, on, weigh in on this. And I know my crew, my team, my Jewish friends would advise me not to. I feel comfortable enough that this is a safe space, and I'm going to weigh in on it. So uh, I'll make it brief. Israel, Palestine. Um... What about Israel and Palestine? He punched the microphone. Okay. Do you think that war in Ukraine, uh, Karabakh, Armenia versus Azerbaijan and Israel are parts of one puzzle, basically a reignition of Cold War, but this time it's between China and USA with EU. No, I don't think so, but maybe. If the Gaza Strip had a border in proximity with a Western country, they, Hamas, would probably have tried to break out and do similar things here. No, I don't know what the, I don't I have no idea what that question means. 
At random, did you see Frogan's singular sponsor is Raid Shadow Legends? That's pretty funny. Created and operated by an Israeli-based company. I didn't know that. Hmm. We talked about cancel culture. We talked about other student orgs making crazy statements. I haven't actually gone over any of the actual war stuff because I don't know, like... I don't even know what I would cover. Would you just read? I don't know how people do breaking news. Do you agree that Israel probably should not have kept Gaza under blockade all these years? Uh, I don't know. Their, their argument would be when we give Gaza resources, it all goes to Hamas, and then they use it to kill us. Yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> ben Shapiro commenting on Hassan clip. Oh, shit. Really? Hold on. Sign in to confirm your age? Bruh, really? Hold on. We're, you're not going to get to see this. Stay mad. That, that's clearly the problem. Israel... It Israel's skirt was too short, you see. That's why you walk into a village and you rape women and, and drag them back to the Gaza Strip. That's why you do this. There's a moral, moral exemplar, Hassan Piker. They didn't deserve it, you idiot. My goal is solutions. Your goal is the continuation of violence. You want way more than 260 people dying. You want every single Palestinian to be executed ruthlessly in the streets so that you can build another theme park in Gaza. You f baying pig. You f bloodthirsty, violent pig dog. Suck my d I also hate it because, like, I don't think he cares about this that much. He doesn't give a fuck about it. The, the outrage is, like, so performative. Ugh, whatever. How do you think this happens? You think it happens out of nowhere? You think these people are just like, oh, we were violent because we want to be violent. Well, you think that's where violence dollars. culminates from? Or do you think it's because you have entrapped them, you have bullied them, you have subjugated them, you have humiliated these people? Two million people live inside of Gaza. I, they're not even people in the eyes of Israel. So uh, that's that's presumably, according to Hassan Piker, why you would murder a baby. That's why you that's why you would murder a baby and burn entire families in their homes in peaceful villages. That's why you that's why you would do that. Um, now, I'm going to attribute this to, again, the peculiar narcissism of people like Hassan Piker who believes that everybody thinks like they do. And I, I, I would ask people like Hassan Piker, okay, if that's the case, if you really believe that victimization is what causes people to murder babies in their beds for the crime of being Jewish and breathing, then uh, what would cause you to do something like that? Is there any level of victimization you could undergo that would cause you to do something like that? Because I, I, don't, I don't think so, actually. I think highly enough, even of, of people who I think are, are intellectual Cretans like uh, like Hassan Piker, but I don't like actually think that, that he thinks that. There's nothing that could make him do something like that. I'll give him at least that much credit. But the peculiar narcissism that drives you to believe that everybody thinks like you do, and then to immediately jump to Israel is attempting to wipe out. The, Israel has not had a presence in the Gaza Strip since 2005. Since 2005. The okay, but that's that. That's what I mean when I said I don't think I would buy Ben's premium. Okay, a couple things. Firstly, it is correct. Okay, just because people do bad things to you doesn't mean that your response can be unhinged, okay? Um, killing festival goers, abducting people, a thousand plus dead, potentially killing babies, potentially raping women, that's kind of an unhinged response, okay? There's like a level of proportionality that makes sense, especially what we should support in the West. Um, however, to say that like, well, Israel's, you know, retreated completely from the Gaza Strip and they have no presence there, while that's true, Israel still blockades the Gaza Strip, and I'm pretty sure they have sole control over, like, all the electricity and everything in the Gaza Strip as well. So, I mean, like, are they not there? That's kind of true, but I don't really think that's the complaint right now, you know? The last thing Israel wants to do is send its own sons and daughters into the streets of Gaza. That's the last thing they want to do. I know many of the people who are going to be going into Gaza. I know some of the people who undoubtedly will die in Gaza trying to protect their brothers and sisters in Israel. You think they want to be there? They tried to hand the entire Gaza Strip to Egypt. You know what Egypt said? Hell no. We don't want any piece of it. This belief that, that Israel is land hungry for Gaza is the most bizarre piece of propagandistic trash and ignorance I've ever heard. It's, it's so bizarre and strange. Well, I mean, Israel would probably like to completely control the Gaza Strip and probably expel Palestinians from there, right? I mean, that would, that would definitely be, I think, if Israel could do that, they'd probably want to do that, right? That's what this is really all about, according to... And again, I can, I can attribute to one of two things. Either, either There are only two possible reasons. Ignorance or you hate Jews. Those are the only two possible reasons. Jesus. 
Have you covered justification for Israel's desire to keep the Arab population low, maintain a Jewish ethno-religious state on stream? I'm catching up to coverage for the whole thing. I think mostly agree with you, but I struggle when things like Israel passed through the nation state law, which basically affirms that Israel is a Jewish nation for Jews brought up. It's my opinion the language white nationalists like Nick Fuentes use to justify the desire for a white ethno state. The white ethno state doesn't really make sense because white people aren't being attacked all over the world. Um, the justification or the rationalization for like a Jewish ethno state is that Jews are essentially kind of prosecuted or persecuted like all over the world. Like the creation of Israel and the protection of like the Jewish people is a lot different than like the protection of like the white people because it's not like a worldwide, like if there was like a worldwide conquest or, or attack on white people then, but I guess white nationalists want you to believe that. So I don't know, <laughs> true. At least 22 Americans were killed in the surprise Hamas attack on Israel and US citizens are among the hostages being held by the militant group in Gaza. That's a really spooky scenario, but. Do you think the US will get directly involved against Palestine because of the US citizens aspect? I would be surprised. I don't think the U.S. wants to go on the ground and take like a really strong stance there. That would be my guess, but I could be wrong. Well, if it ends up that a whole bunch of, I think here is a guess that I would have. I don't think Israel can fall because I think the U.S. will defend them in some capacity. If it was the case that like Iran and Hezbollah and, and Syria proper, and you know the rest of Lebanon and fucking um, and Palestine were like all fighting hard against Israel. Like Israel's having significant problems. I think that you might have an issue where the United States feels like they need to take an active role, maybe. But <clears throat> Destiny is this fake? Don't link me tweets of bodies, and I have no fucking idea. Civilians burned alive by Hamas animal. I have no idea if this is false or not. I don't know. Look, wait for third party media to um, confirm. Um. Okay, fuck. Are we good? I don't know if I have anything else to say until I come back tomorrow morning. Do you believe there should be a difference between Palestinians living among Jews in the West Bank and the elsewhere from those in Gaza? If so, what is the difference? What do you mean, is there a difference? Should there be a difference? What do you mean? Like, should they be treated differently? Or are they like different types of people? Or, I mean, I'm sure they all, I don't, I have no idea what that, I feel bad if you donated 10 bucks, but I have no idea how to answer that question. What do you mean, should there be a difference? They live in different areas or? Pin on the view that Israel promotes Hamas. Many articles on the topic. Uh, supposedly Israel, I've read a lot that headline that I think it was Netanyahu himself or somebody. I, I don't know if that's true, but like empowered Hamas initially and now they're, I don't know if that's true or not. I've seen it typed a lot, but I'm not sure. I don't know the history there enough to know if that's true. Did you ever look into the martyr fund or pay for slay? I've heard about that and I don't know if that's true either. We should, uh, we should look at all this shit tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow will be... I heard somewhere that Hamas helped Israel get free from Egypt or some shit. Okay. I have a question. Greetings from Jerusalem, Israel. I think that Israel uses opportunity to drag us into confrontation and the final solution to the Iranian problem. Pretty much there is an understanding that Hamas is a proxy of Iran and Iran will never be appeased. I don't know. Why can some live among Jews and some not? This is an interesting question from the river to the sea rhetoric. Well, I doubt all Palestinians are united in their views. Like the West Bank Palestinians seem to be a bit more chill than like the Gaza Strip Palestinians, right? And I'm sure that the Palestinians or Arabs that live in Israel probably have different views too. Everybody's, it's probably different between all the different groups of people, I would imagine, right? 